IRS audits. Welcome back to our channel, Clear Valley Tax. My name is Brian Kim. I'm a certified public accountant, and today we're discussing IRS audits. Today we're going to be discussing two types of audits. So there are mail audits where all the correspondence is done via mail. The second one is in-person audits. That's where you go to the IRS office, you schedule an appointment, you go there and you hash it out in person with an IRS agent. The third one is a field off. It's a field office visit, but that's really regarding businesses. That's much more complex where they go to your site or location, and we're not gonna be discussing that one. We're gonna be discussing the mail audit and the in-person audit where you go to the IRS office. So starting with the mail audit, again, all correspondence is done through mail. So you're gonna be getting a letter or you've probably got one that says, we're auditing your form 1040 and need a response from you. Dear taxpayer, we're auditing your federal return and need additional information to support the items listed below that you claimed on your return. This is what you need to do. And then they're gonna tell you what they're looking for. They're gonna tell you what you need to do. And they're gonna give you a due date. And my first tip is don't miss the due date. There is no reason why you should miss the due date you should have got at least three weeks. It's probably four to six weeks from the deadline that they're requesting. If you miss that deadline, you're talking about resolving this in tax court. That's a disaster. You don't want to end up there. You can just take care of this right now. It's going to be so simple rather than going, trying to resolve this in tax court. So do yourself a favor, you know, don't put this off. Try to resolve this as quickly as possible once you get the notice. Okay, so they're gonna tell you what you need to do. It's gonna literally say what you need to do. So they're generally gonna be looking for two things, one or the other, or both. They're gonna be seeing if the deductions that you claimed are real, whether they really exist, or did you just create them out of thin air? Are they totally fictitious? So one thing that they might be trying to look for is are these deductions real? If that's not the case, they might be saying, okay, these deductions that you claimed, we acknowledge that they're real, but are they relevant to you, to your situation, or do you deserve them? That's gonna have, that's gonna be the case for certain deductions, for certain credits. So we'll go over that. Okay, so sometimes they just want you to prove that the, that the, expenses or the deductions or credits are real in that situation they're going to be looking for just receipts any kind of documentation receipts are always the best if you don't you can use credit card statements bank statements any kind of documentation to support your claim again receipts are always the best but if you can have other forms of documentation you know that's that's better than nothing so that's just a question of did that expense deduction or credit exist so that's one thing another thing is going back to what i was saying before that they acknowledge that okay we are not question we are not questioning that deduction or that amount we're questioning if it's relevant or related to you and your situation whether you deserve to claim it so a situation like this would be, um, let's just say your your small business, your your Schedule C sole proprietorship is getting audited, and they're questioning your meals expense, your business meals expense. They're not questioning your receipts. They're questioning you claim this as your meals expense. We're not questioning that did it occur, did it not occur. We're questioning is this related to your business. And then that's the difference of did it exist versus is it relevant? So basically, depending on the category, they might be looking for things other than just receipts. One example, I'll give you another example. Before people, before the whole tax rule changes, people were claiming the MBA deduction as a job related expense. So a lot of times in that situation, they were not questioning the tuition amounts. They were not questioning, did this expense really occur? They were questioning, is this related to your job? 
In that case, they made you fill out a questionnaire saying, here is your job, here are the tuition expenses, here are your classes. Tell me how these classes were related to your job. And then you would literally have to write a description of each class you took for the MBA and how that's related to your job and why you deserve to claim it as a deduction on your tax return. So it's really a question of, you gotta identify what they're asking for. Are they identifying, prove that this deduction or credit or expense existed? Or are they saying, or are they getting at, prove that this was related to your job function or your business function or your business activities? So first you need to identify what they're asking. What are they trying to ask you? And then answer it appropriately. So again, under the this is what you need to do section, it'll tell you fill out this questionnaire that we've included in the envelope or it'll say these expenses on your schedule C, these expense categories, basically prove them. Show me the receipts, show me documentation. So just follow their instructions. They're gonna tell you exactly what you need to do. If you have questions, please feel free to leave them below. We'll get we'll get back to you. So the advice I can say is don't write anything that makes you look bad. Don't write anything that's going to self-incriminate you. When you're responding, just know that they're trying to see any reason why you don't deserve that deduction or expense or credit. You don't want to open up any new doors either. So stay on topic. So just answer the question, don't write anything that makes you look bad, and try to put yourself in the most favorable light as possible and just stay on topic and write a good answer and just know that they're trying to get you. You know, they're trying to get you. They're trying to disallow that deduction for you. So just know that. So that's their intent and that's how you need to respond and that's what you need to do to prove, you know, your position that you claimed on your tax return. Okay, going to the in-person audit. So we're gonna start the in-person audit. So this is basically a more difficult version of the mail correspondent audit because you're gonna be in person with an actual IRS agent. So it's gonna be more complex and more involved. So I'm gonna give you tips on how to get through this and what you need to do, how you need to act, what are the expectations. Okay, so let me just jump right into this. So when you get an in-person audit request, they're gonna say, the letter's gonna say, this is what you need to do. You need to schedule an appointment. So, okay, please schedule an appointment. And show up on the appointment day. You don't wanna get the IRS upset. So schedule an appointment, show up on time, on that day. And then on the letter, it's gonna say, these are the issues to be reviewed during the examination. Generally, from what I've seen, they're not gonna list everything. They don't wanna go through your whole tax return, no. Even if it's a certain schedule or a certain page, they're, they don't, they're not interested in the whole page or schedule. They're only interested in bits and pieces of that portion of that schedule. You know, for example, if you have a Schedule C, I, I say Schedule C a lot because Schedule Cs are audited the most. So Schedule C, is a sole proprietorship or independent contractor or basically a, a small business owner that's unincorporated. So if you have Schedule C, you know, you're gonna probably have 10 or 15 or 20 expense categories. They're most likely, they're only gonna be targeting a handful of those. They're not gonna be targeting all your expense categories. And this is where they're gonna write it. So they're gonna say, these are the issues to be reviewed during your examination. So the ones, the categories that are not listed, you don't even need to worry about them. They're not interested in it. That's off topic. Okay, so it's gonna also say, this is what you need to bring with you to the examination. So whatever is listed, please bring that. Okay, so I'm gonna give you tips on what you need to do or what you can expect from the in-person audit. Okay, so the first thing I'll say is that you can bring anyone with you to the audit. You don't need power of attorney, you can have power of attorney, 
So you can bring anyone, family, friend, your accountant, your attorney, whoever. So you can bring anybody with you and you don't need power of attorney. Okay. You need to prepare yourself mentally because they're out to get you. This isn't, <laughs> I mean, I wish I could say that this was just, oh, a matter of, oh, let's try to hash out this misunderstanding. Let, let's review this in a, in a cordial manner, you know, the, uh, sunshine and rainbows. No, it's not the case. Basically, they're out to get you. And you need to defend yourself because basically they're trying to either disallow deductions. They're trying to, you know, they're trying to add more tax to you. You know, I mean, this is their job. This is their job because a lot of times, you know, I mean, I can't blame them. You have a lot of, you know, bad characters out there who are just abusing the system with deductions or just making things up. And basically it's their job to catch those people. And maybe you, you did a little bit of that. Maybe you did a lot of that. Basically they're trying to sort out the bad apples from the good apples. So they're, they're coming in with that mentality. You know, they're trying to get you, see if anything's wrong. So you can't just go in there thinking that this is gonna be a pleasant experience because you're gonna most likely open yourself up and expose yourself to all kinds of trouble. And I'll tell you why. Okay. Basically, going back to what I said in the mail correspondence audit, you wanna stay on topic. Okay, they, they told you what expense categories that they're looking to review. You do not want to go off to a separate expense category and open up a door for them to, you know, examine you further. You know, if they're not interested in your travel expenses, don't talk about travel expenses because you might say something that gets them suspicious or you might, you might tell them, you know, erroneously that you did something wrong and you not even knowing it. And then that would open up a door for them to audit that section or category as well. So stay on topic. You will minimize or you, you want to minimize your self-incrimination. You don't want to open up new doors. So don't incriminate yourself. Stay on topic. Okay. So what is the IRS audit like? It, when you go to the IRS office, you know, you might be thinking that you're going to be in a big office, big cold office room with IRS agents dressed up in suits. No, it's not the case. Usually, it's, for lack of a better word, it's a pretty ghetto experience. It's going to be, you're going to be dealing with one IRS agent in a, a tiny cubicle. And usually, their cubicles are just like mounted with there's just papers everywhere. It's It's pretty... It's pretty dirty and nasty, to be honest. And everything's gonna look filthy, and everything's gonna look outdated. Basically, it's it's pretty it's pretty much not what you expect. It's one IRS agent in a tiny little cubicle, and it's just a mess. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you had that or picture that in your mind, but that's how it usually is. Well, at least in the Chicago office. <laughs> okay, so. When you are talking with the IRS agent, again, prepare yourself mentally, you know, be nice. Just, you know, don't be a jerk to the agent. That's the last thing you want to do. As I told you, they're trying to find ways to get you. But in your response, always be respectful, always be polite, always be nice. Because if you get on their bad side, I mean, they're going to they're going to find <laughs> other ways to get at you or they're just not going to drop the case. You know, there's a human element here. So just, just be nice, you know, use your, use your brain, be smart. You don't want to piss off an IRS agent. You know, they're just going to make your life harder. Why would you do that? You know, you're just hurting yourself. Okay. So when you go to the, the IRS audit, it's going to be a conversation and they're going to be trying to make you explain your expenses, your deductions and whatnot. And a lot of times, again, they're not looking for existence. They're not looking for existence of that deduction. You might show on the receipts and think you're good. That's the end of the story. You know, these are my these are my purchases of supplies. Here you go. Case closed. No, it doesn't work like that. You know, I, I mean, I don't want to call them jerks, but they're gonna 
they're going to act like this. They're going to say, okay, okay, those are your receipts. Great. Now show me how these are related to your business. And even if they're very self-explanatory, like cost of goods sold, you know, inventory, you know, sometimes they might, they might drill deep, like very deep and they want more evidence or they might just leave it at that at the receipts. You know, for example, if you're going to be claiming travel expenses and that's a category that they're auditing, even if you show the airline purchase, the tickets, the hotel, the lodging, then you think you're good? No, they're going to say, okay, thanks for the receipts. Now, Give me email correspondence of who you were talking to over there on why it was necessary for you to travel there and lodge there. Okay, give me brochures from the events that you were attending. Okay, give me your itinerary for the event that you were supposedly at. You know, give me this, give me that. You think it just ends at the receipts? Like, oh, these are receipts, we're good. No, not at all. You know, they can go as deep as they want and you know, they can make your life a living hell. So, but circling back, that just goes back to be nice because, you know, it's at their, it's kind of at their discretion of how deep that they can dig in for a particular category or request. You don't want to get on their bad side. There's a human element to this, you know, keep them in a good mood, basically, you know, make your life easier. And a lot of times there's, they're going to say, you know, I can't remember a single audit where we just ended on the first meeting. Usually there's going to be a follow up. They're going to say, you know, thanks for coming in. Uh, we just want, you know, this, this, and this. We need, we want these receipts, or we want some documentation on that category. The other categories are fine. You know, we want follow up evidence or documentation or materials. So a lot of times there's going to be a follow up, not necessarily a second meeting. They're going to say, drop it off. You can fax it or whatnot. So a lot of times it's not going to just be a one and done meeting. Just expect there to be a follow-up. Okay, so if you found this helpful, please give us a like. That would be very appreciated. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them below. We'd be happy to get back to you. We look forward to making more videos. Thanks for tuning in. Take care.